Now, recently I tied a carriage pattern using the plastic or elastic uh, beading cord that basically you can buy off eBay. And the size I'm using is the uh, 0.8. Now you get lots of colours. And this one's a clear. Now, this is a nymph I'm going to be tying. Now, this is just a basic sort of nymph to shape colour combination that works extremely well. Now, as you can see, this is quite a small one, size 14. 0 0.8, I would say, would tie the 14 quite easy. Um, once you go below that, you're better with the 0 0.4. And then the bigger nymphs, there is a bigger size as well. But the way I get the taper or the start, which is quite important, I put it into my vice like you see there. And what I then do is I get a lighter and I basically run up and side and down, up and down lightly. Don't I'm only holding it, I'm just warming it up at this point, and then stretch once it's warmed up. And this will give you a, a, a better taper. Now if you're not if you want it a wee bit more than thin than that, you can go back in. Now don't just keep it straight, don't put any pressure, just heat it. Once it's you feel it's you'll see it changing shape slightly. Then stretch it. Don't stretch and with the heat. Just let it heat up and then stretch. And you, you can add, make it much smaller. So you need to, to work it on down about a, a good inch of it. And then stretch and you'll see how it goes. And you see how much thinner that is. I'll take it off the vice so you can see. It may go curly like that, but that's fine. You can easily tie that in. And you can see how it tapers. And that's how you get the start. Your nymph. Now for the hook, I'm using a, this is a full long mill hook, it's an uh, all-purpose medium uh, size 14. Thread I'm going to be using is the this is the uni thread in rusty brown. So first thing I'm going to do is just run the wax through it to get it started. And then just before that I'm going to actually add a wee bit of weight to the fly and I'm using a uh, small copper wire. Now I'm going to start about Around about two mil from the eye, I'm just going to build up a, a wee thorax. Now take it down about say two to three mil, then break away the waste. And then I'm going to come down, say half a dozen tons or so, and break off the wire. It's much easier to apply if you've got it on the bobbin. I'm just using a ceramic bobbin holder to wind that on. Now just to give this a wee bit more grip. I'm just going to touch it with the super glue. This is a full ml super glue I use. This will stop it rotating. Now the, that one comes with a brush, so it's really easy to apply. Now we're back to our thread, so I'm going to start at the eye, and then I'm going to come up, controlling the turns with the waist piece. I'm going to wind down until just before we get around the bend. I'm going to remove the waist piece. I'll make it secure. Tail fibres could be anything, they could be cock, cock hen fibres, natural brown or so. Now I had some, this is a uh, white and cock de Leon feathers, these are some large. And I've dyed this a fiery brown, so it suits this colour. Now I'm bringing the fibres 90 degrees from the stem and turn them off. It's just, I want to form a small, like a wee fan fibre, to give the impression of the tail. You're looking for a tail length, round about the body length, or two thirds of the shank, so I'm going to catch this on the top. First thing I'm going to do is check the length. See the length's okay, that's fine. You can lift it up, and you can take your thread underneath, and then this will help spread the fibres. Just be a quick look to see what they're, what they're like. It's just a, I mean, it's a very light fibre, as you can see. It just gives a, like a when these nymphs are coming off, the tails fan out and they use our tail to flick and swim. So that's what I'm trying to give the impression of. Now we've got our elastic cord, or beading cord if you want to call it. Now you can see it's a wee bit curly at the end, so what I like to do is just come over a couple of turns and then pull it in. That's fine. And then as we wind down, really tight, stretch out the cord till we get to the tail and start to wind ourselves back up. Now I'm going to do something a wee bit different here. I've got, this is a peacock in orange. It's peacock, which is that colour. 
and orange on the other side so we've got a mix and I'm going to use either both sides start off with the, the orange side so so that it shows through I'm going to cut this is halfway up I'm going to catch this in just a wee highlight continue up and then pull this over it's the first part of the thorax cover and then trim this away we're going to come back to this and then again and then we a good start at the back, nice and tight. This is really strong stuff, and then we wind up. It will get thicker as we go because the tape on the body, as well as the the cord, gets thicker as we wind as well. To so we come over the the orange now, I'm going to wee stretch here, cross with thread, nice and tight. Now at this point, just put a good few turns in so it doesn't slip. Just check our body, see what it looks like. Now that's I'm really happy with that. So what I do is then come in with a straight cut along the side of the cord. So I'll turn this around so you can see it. A tapered cut. So what I'm gonna try and show you is just what I do is then is just wind tight. Because it's tapered, it should hit taper towards the eye. Get that nice and tight. And then we just work the way back up. Now you can see that wee glint of the, the orange part coming through, just a wee highlight. Now we go back to it, and we want the peacock side this time, so we tie this on the top for the thorax cover. Just make sure it's sitting on the top. And again, may slip, so put a wee bit of wax on your thread. So you take it down towards the eye, and then come back up. Up to the body, and then we are. Then I'm going to get some dubbing. This is the squirrel dub again. A squirrel dub, a natural dubbing. It's a squirrel dubbing. And this one's from it's Davy Watton's uh, SLF. Now Wopsy that make this. So this is the orange. So we just lightly dub this one with red. Now you've seen me doing this before. It's actually times easier to. Uh, you dub into, I'm going to take my thread to just before the eye and I'm going to work my way up. It's easier to work up the way and then come back through with the thread. So if I work my way back down through, it gives you a nice taper. It's easier to control as well. So any fibre going forward with the eye then we come. Just draw it back and hold it back with the thread turns. Put a nice base of wax thread in that area here. Now any long fibres that we don't want we can Take them out. Now what I'm going to do here is going to wind. I've got a hen neck here, just a Indian or a Chinese hen neck, natural brown. So you can see it's got a wee bit of black in it as well. A better one. And you don't want the fibre too long. So what I'm going to do here is tie this in by the tip. So I'm holding the tip of the, the hackle with my small hackle pliers. Trim it so it's the right length. Catch this in. Now we've got a wax on my thread. And then make sure you get a good grip. Now you're looking, let's just use the hackle pliers here. A turn to two turns anyway, this wee hackle. So I'm, what I'm gonna, all I'm doing here is stroking the fibres back. Now the front of the hackle is facing towards the eye. So a couple of turns. Another one here. That's fine. Cross your thread, two or three turns, making sure it's secure. Trim that away, or oh, sorry. What I'm going to do is fold it back, actually. So I'm going to stroke everything that's going forward. Get a bit of hair. Stroke everything, going back from the eye. Stroke it back and hold it back with the thread turns. Now that's enough to hold the hackle. I can break that off. You don't need many fibres. What I'm doing here is making like a... So a middle shed as you want to say, just drawing back or drawing the fibres down either side of the hook. Now we bring this over. The first thing before we go any further, make sure there's wax on the thread. Bring that over. Pull it towards the eye, nice and tight, two or three turns. See how it looks. That's fine. So another one in there. And then as neat as you can, trim it away. 
sometimes I like to fold these back, but it's a wee bit thick, this, uh, this stencil, so what I'm going to do is just make sure it's well tied down a few turns, and that's fine. And the part finish. Sure it's clean because you get the wee bit of XX or the excess wax coming off the thread so then we can throw your thread. I'm gonna highlight the I'll show you the tail a wee bit better. Just push it up so you can see the, the fan light fibre. The cotton the Leon fibres catch the light, it's very glass like and it uh, looks apart. So what I'm going to do is highlight the thorax with some resin. This is the fully mill resin, so it's a very hard resin. Some in the top. See how it's sitting? It's sitting more bubble light just now, so what I'm going to do before I do anything, I'm just going to spread it slightly. It's towards the head. See what it's like. That'll do it. And then we can set the resin. Take your time. I like to give it a wee bit longer than to say, make sure the, the resin's cured. But you can see that nice shine, it comes through the the cord as well as the obviously the the, the resin highlights the peacock colour. And then what I like to do is finish off a very fine coat of varnish. Just onto the thorax cover. And then always around the head area. Just take your time you're doing this. There we go. And that's just something you can try. Now as I said there's been some really nice patterns get, uh, were put on uh, Facebook and uh, using the same type of material. A lot of people asking about it and that's why I got asked to tie, tie one of these. So there we are. It's, it's like a wee it's pheasant tail type colour. Works well. Simple really to tie. Once you get going you get a few tied. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>